Hello, hello everyone. Um, give me just a second. I am finishing putting um, some stuff out of the way <laughs> and trying to get myself up on the screen here. It kind of snuck up, seven o'clock snuck up on me tonight. I've got to grab my little bucket for tonight. We are gonna be creating with these right here. These are pretzel um, rods is what they call them. They're green fudged dipped witch fingers. So we're gonna be creating a box to, um, to put this in. And while I get up, um, happy Friday. It is the weekend. Yay! Um, I am working on finishing all the last little details for class tomorrow. Um, so it has been um, quite a busy afternoon since I got home. <laughs> um, make sure that you tell me hello when you come in. I would love to see your comments. Um, give me a thumbs up and then also if you are not following me make sure that you follow me too so that you can get all the information that's coming up with Stampin' Up as well as any new projects that I create. Um, all right so we're gonna dive in because after the live after we create the box I'm gonna actually show you how I come up with the boxes for the different items that I do. I haven't shown that in a really long time, so I'm going to show that tonight. Um, sorry, Maggie's in the background. <laughs> ben just walked in the house, so he is, uh, he was grabbing her. All right, let me see if I can actually pull up my screen so I can see comments. There we go. All right, good, good, good. Okay, so this is the box we're gonna create. And um, it's a skinny box, and I love that. Um, and this paper here is actually some close to my heart paper. Um, I haven't used any of the close to my heart stuff that I have purchased, um, but I am in love with this paper, and I keep saying, no, I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to. And I believe it is actually still available on the website, let me just double check. I can tell you real quick. Um, it is called Mixed In Paper Packet. And, and, oh well, actually it is not still available. So you can actually use the Halloween paper that we used the other night. Um, you can use this and turn it over and use the black and white paper. When I checked, you can use this paper or you can use the black striped. When I checked uh, the other day when I made the project, it was still there. So <laughs> it has quickly gone apparently, um, but that is okay. We're still gonna use what I have already cut up for tonight. Okay, so let's dive in. Let me get back over here. And we are going to do a little scoring just like we did before. And again, after the live is done, we will I will have all of the measurements put up into the description of the video so that you've got that. Uh, so if you want to create these, then you can do that. And these little witch's fingers were found at CVS. So you can head out to CVS. And the last time I was at CVS, which was last week, they still had um, several boxes of those. Um, now that's downtown Columbia, South Carolina. So, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is on the long side, we are going to score it at one. And then we're going to come down here and score it at 10. And actually, I think this is, this is not right. I need to cut it down a little bit. I'm sorry. It should actually be at 10 and I did that when I was creating the first time. I need to cut off an inch. All right, and you can get two boxes out of each piece of cardstock with um, to create this. So you could do um, two fingers per piece per sheet of cardstock because it's four and a quarter by 10. 
Okay, now we're gonna turn it on our short side and we're gonna score at one. We're gonna score at two. We're gonna score at three. And again, at four, okay? And I'm just gonna make sure real quick that I've got this inside. The inside section has to be at eight because that's how long the finger is. And so I just wanted to make sure I had that right. Okay, so now we're going to do our bone folder um, with our score lines and grab that. And this is just a little tiny one. And the reason I did a tiny one is because I wanted to make sure that you could get two boxes out of each piece um, of cardstock. Cause you know, you don't wanna waste a lot of cardstock. And so, you know, if you decided that you only needed one, you could still use the other half to create a card to go along with it as well. All right. I'm gonna do this little tiny one. That's the one I really wanna get. Okay, now we're gonna grab our scissors and we are going to do some cutting. We're gonna cut up here like this and then we're gonna trim this at an angle. And then we're gonna do that again on this side. So you're gonna cut off these little rectangles on the end at each edge like that. And then this is gonna be the part that will keep the box together. Okay, so now we're just gonna go through and cut um, on each side of our hump. All right, let's see if I can move faster. And one more on this side, and then we're just gonna take and pull those little tabs out. Um, this one, it didn't look like it cut very well, so I'm just gonna cut it again. There we go. You wanna make sure that you do cut enough off so that they're not touching, because when you go to put the box together, um, it's, they're gonna overlay, so you don't want them to show over the side of the box. All right, and then we're gonna come over here and do the same thing on this side. And we'll get these done. Let me try that on from this side. There we go. Okay, so then we're gonna pull these off. Just like this. Okay. Now once we've got all that, then we're gonna put our box together. And we're gonna use some um, tear and tape. Because it's easier instead of using your seal because it's just not, um, this is so skinny. So we're gonna take and put our Tear and tape along the edge. And then we'll take off that back. And anything that is over, you just wanna make sure that you kind of rub it back over onto itself. It's usually pretty good because that is, that is about the exact size of that tear and tape. All right, so then we're going to lay that down. I'm just gonna take my bone folder and just give it a good overlay like that just to keep it secure. Okay, now that's the back of our box because that is where our seam comes together. So what we wanna do is come over here. We're gonna place that down. We're gonna put some adhesive on this side we're gonna flip it, put some adhesive on this side. And I'm just doing one little line. Okay, let me find that seam again, sorry. Okay, so then we've got our seam there. So we're gonna fold that. We're gonna fold that in. And we're gonna fold that one. 
And then last but not least, we're gonna do this one. And we're gonna put two things of adhesive on it and we'll fold that up. And this is gonna be facing that seam. So now when you put um, everything on the front, you won't see that seam at all. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is, again, we're just going to, on this one, we're not actually gonna adhere it. We're just going to do this with it. After we put our finger in it, we gotta put that in there. You know, that is something I would do. I would totally <laughs> put all the boxes together and then realize that I didn't put the fingers in them. That is completely me. Now, it com it fits, literally just fits perfectly um, because it is such a long box that I wanted to make sure that, you know, there's not really a lot of excess up there. So just know that it is, it is a good tight squeeze. All right, so we're gonna do, um, let's see, I need to go this way and that way and that way and then there. Okay, now we're gonna take, I'm gonna turn that upside down for just a second. So I'm gonna have that real set aside because I want to take my ribbon and we're going to wrap it around And this is a double pack of ribbon. It's got petal pink and then it's got um, this white in it. If I can get the white, let's see. My finger's not getting down in there. All right. And we're gonna take it and wrap it around. And you know what, of course, I forgot a step. I always forget a step. Somewhere along the way, I always forget a step. We're gonna add on our designer series paper first. So we need to run our adhesive. It would help if I actually looked at the box. And what we can do is we can adhere this side and our back side and then wrap our ribbon. All right, so then let's do this here and all the way down. There we go. Okay, and you're gonna notice right here, this little piece is sticking out. So I'm just gonna open that back up really quick and make sure that's in so that it doesn't mess everything up. Okay, now let's take our ribbon and wrap it around. And this is what's gonna keep our box top closed. And now I'm gonna pull this until I have enough. A little bit more, there we go. And then we are going to tie a bow. Oops. All right, it might be easier to do it this way anyway. Okay. I don't have as much room to stand it up as I normally do, so it's a little awkward because I'm in a smaller space doing this. Okay, there we go. All right, so now you've got your bow up here on the top. And then we're gonna trim off our ends right here. And not too much, because we want them to kind of be big, kind of match that tall box. Okay, now we're gonna flip it to its side and we're gonna put our other two strips on. And, and then we'll start doing our stampin'. Okay, flip it one more time. Oops, I think I am about to run out of seal, which is usually how it works for me. All right, let's flip that around. There we go. Okay, and now we'll stick this up here 
and come down just like that. All right, now we'll set that aside. We've got a black um, cardstock and we have cut a circle out of it. I have already cut the broom out and I put adhesive on the back of both of them. So we'll take the adhesive sheets off. Just makes it so much easier to do it that way. And then this is gonna go back behind there. And then this is gonna lay kind of down further off of the circle and then across the back like that, okay? Now we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna grab in our, well, I had a piece of scrap paper, but I don't know what I did with it, so we'll just grab a different one. We are gonna stamp our sentiment, the cat, and a stack of books. So we'll stamp that there. We'll do the cat right there. And then we're gonna do the sentiment down here on the bottom. And we're gonna get really close to the edge, just like that because we don't want the sentiment to be too wide, which will cover up a good chunk of the books when we put it on the front. Okay, now let's do some coloring. And I've got my blends over here in a basket. So let's start with the Highland Heather. And we're gonna do the light Highland Heather. And we're gonna do the top book with all the way across with the light. Okay, then we're gonna take the dark and just do the ends. Okay, then we're gonna take some pumpkin pie. And we're gonna go all the way around. Just like that. Then we're gonna take the dark pumpkin pie and we're gonna do just the two lines in the center, like that. Next, we're gonna do some smoky slate. We're gonna do the whole book with the smoky slate light, just like we did the pumpkin pie one. Okay, and then we're gonna take the dark and we're just gonna do the outside. So the book cover, and then we're just gonna do the three lines right there. So it'll have a little bit of light in there as well. All right, and then the portions, or the portions, the potions book down here, we're gonna do in lemon lime twist. We're gonna do light on this side and all the way down. Okay, and then we're gonna do the dark on the three little binder parts there. Almost looks like a um, pencil. And then we're gonna color all down here like that. Okay. Now for our cat. So for our cat, we're gonna do the body um, with the dark. No, I'm sorry. We're gonna start with the light. And I'm gonna use my big tip for now just to kind of get the big chunks of it together so it doesn't take me so long to color. You just have to be careful and don't do what I just did. All right. All right, and then once you do that, then what I'm gonna do is go to the small tip side and go around all the areas that are hard to get to and then make sure I go along the edges. 
And that's the part that takes the crazy, um, that takes the longest, the crazy part. It's the crazy part. All right. And then there we go. And then we're going to go along the edge here, get that tail, then get all of our feet, a little poles. I'm trying to color it quick. The cat does take the longest to color up, I feel like. Maybe it's because it's got so much open space with it. But we will get there. All right, so there we go. A little messy on my part, but it'll be all right. Okay, so then you're gonna take the dark and you're gonna go over all these extra little lines that are on the cat. Like those right there, up the tail. There and all right. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some petal pink. We're gonna take the dark petal pink. We're gonna do the little nose. You can't really see it, but you can do that. And then the light lemon lolly we're gonna do for the eyes. Just like that. Okay. Now, once you get done with that, what you want to do is grab your cutter and we are going to cut the sentiment off. So, I'm going to put that, I'm going to move it up here so that y'all can see it. Now, I want that the words, so when you look through your cutter, you're going to see your words. You can either see them or you you can't see it through. If you can't, you want just barely the edge of it to show through that little crack right there, and then you're just gonna cut it, and it's gonna make it that little tiny sentiment. Okay, and then you'll set that aside. I'm gonna turn around and cut out the cat and the spell, um, the books, using the dies. So let's see. I need this one, and then I need this one. All right, I will be right back. It is not tall enough to put the, um, my phone is not up high enough in order for me to actually put the cut and emboss machine underneath it now. So, I still have not figured out how to get um, Facebook to zoom in so that I can use my large area, but, but it is what it is. All right, so we have got that cut out, and then there's our books, and now all we have to do is start putting it all together. Put those up so I don't lose them. Okay, so we've got our black card circle here, and we're going to take some dimensionals, and we're just going to put them right there in the center. We're going to do one, two, and three. And I'm going to have to go grab some more dimensionals. I might have some small ones over here. All right, so we're going to stick that right about there. And then we're just gonna press that down just so it stays in place, okay? And then we are gonna take our books here and we're gonna pop those up. I think I've got some. Let's use these. We can use the edges of these. So we'll put that there, that there. And then we're going to put this here like that. We're going to take our cat. We'll put dimensionals on the back of the cat. And we're going to put two little dimensionals since we've got the little ones here. We're going to leave the very bottom of the feet open. Um, without dimensionals, but we're going to put a little bit of regular adhesive down there for it. And then we're going to stick dimensionals here. Okay. 
And then just make sure that some of your adhesive isn't over. And then you're gonna stick the cat right there. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sentiment and we are going to trim off over here and we're gonna trim off pretty close and then we're gonna trim here at an angle. Again, pretty close. And then we're gonna put some adhesive on the back. This one, you are gonna make sure that you take that adhesive and wrap it right back up on top of itself because that is a very skinny piece of cardstock. All right, and then you're gonna stick it right here so that you can see the um, Smoky Slate um, book and the Pumpkin Pie book. All right, and then there is your box. So short, quick, and simple. Again, um, adding some of these extra little layers and the coloring is obviously the longest part for you, but um, it still is a really cute box with um, just doing those couple of things, you know, just those couple of extra little steps. So, all right, I'm going to pull in a piece of grid paper and I want to show you how I create a box. And I'm pretty sure, yep, okay, good. I will have enough room. Okay, so... This is my little tip and trick for all of these little Halloween treats or any kind of holiday treat that you have. Um, I always like the grid paper and of course I put it on the inch side because that's what I do my measurements in. So what I want to do is I take and figure out how long it is. Usually I try to, uh, depending on how the ends feel, like if they have a lot of air in them, it's hard to fold over your ends. So take into consideration that when you put it into your um, into your box or when you're going to put it into your box. Okay, so we're going to figure out how long it is. And so how I do this is I take a pen or a pencil and we're going to take a pen um, for tonight and we're going to run it on one of the lines here. And I'm gonna start making sure that the finger is at one of the end ones. And then we're gonna run it all the way down to the other side, okay? Then we're gonna figure out how wide it is. So now we're gonna just take and come down. And on this one, we're gonna come down four is what it looks like. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. And if you look, that is actually gonna be right at that inch that we did. All right, so then you're gonna come down, you're gonna move it, you're gonna come down four here, and then you'll come all the way across. And this is the exact height and width of your object here. Now, we know that this is an inch wide, so you've gotta have four sides to it. So how you do that is you just go down four more. One, two, three, four, yep, make sure I get that. And then you're gonna do one, two, and that's your third, and then that's your fourth. Okay, so now you have your four sides of your box. One, two, three, four. Then you have to remember that you've got to make sure you've got a little piece that will allow you to adhere the box together once you start folding those on top of each other. That was that little long strip that we did where we added in our, um, our tear and tape. So we're gonna add just a quarter of an inch for that one. Sometimes I do a half an inch, sometimes I do, um, you know, a I usually do about a half, but on this one, we're only gonna do the fourth because I wanna make sure, because this is four inches now, and so I wanna add in that quarter inch so that we can get two out of one piece of cardstock. All right, so then once you've got that, now you have to figure out your top and your bottom. And how I do that is I literally take whatever the object is, and I stand it up to figure out how wide it is. Now, of course, again, on this one, I know that all the way around, it's about an inch. So this one's a pretty easy one. So now I need to make sure that I have four ends to my box. So we're gonna take it over an inch, which will be four little boxes, and then we're gonna come all the way down. And then you're gonna do I do like little dotted lines because those are going to be ones that I 
um, I will cut. And then this one, we're gonna cut, but then we'll take this piece off, okay? Then you're gonna need to do that for the other side as well, because you need a top and a bottom. On this box, you could technically leave off one side and just do, and not have a top uh, to close it at all. Okay, and then again, we'll cross that one out and that should have been dotted lines. All right, now you can figure out exactly what you need for the size of your box and you're gonna count it by your part, um, by your numbers down here. So if this is one, this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, did I start right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and then I think I'm off somewhere. Hold on. That one is one, two. I did, I made, I think I made this too long here. Did I? No, I didn't. This should be eight here. Oh yeah, I, I think I am off. See, that that is <laughs> that is why I usually do this in pencil. Um, but let's see, so it's one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this actually should be here. There we go. And then this will come down here. All right. And so this will be all right, so there we go. And then, so now you've got your your length, and then you go and you do your width. So you've got one, two, three, four, and then you've got your little quarter right there. So then that makes that 10 by four and a quarter. And then all you have to go back and remember is to do your score lines at your different ones. So this is one, two, three, and four. And then you just have this at one. And then this is, um, you can flip the box and do it at one again, or you can do um, at nine. And that's that score line there. All right. So I know it can be crazy sometimes with the boxes. Um, I do suggest having grid paper though that's large enough in order to create those boxes for you. Um, but it's all about just kind of measuring everything out and then thinking about your tops and your bottoms. Um, I will have a better picture of this um, that I will actually take and I will get that posted at some point this week so that you guys can um, have kind of that layout. Uh, and you can recreate this box as well. But again, I will have the measurements for this box in the description of this video, along with a list of the products that were used. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me tonight, and I hope you enjoyed our three sets, um, our three different projects for using our Halloween Circe series. Um, I did um, tell you earlier in the week that I will be doing, um, I don't know, oh, here it is, that I will be doing a series for not only um, Halloween that we just finished, but I'll be doing one for Thanksgiving as well as for Christmas this year as well. So it'll be three days again. And at the beginning of November, I will post um, and let you know when the Thanksgiving ones will be. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. And some of you I will see tomorrow at class. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday for YouTube Live. I will be back over on YouTube in my most comfortable place <laughs> for going live. All right, everyone, see you later. Bye.